G'day guys, welcome to Spacey's Arcade. Today we're gonna to go back in time, all the way back to the 80s, and where it all began for me. And look at the Atari VCS video computer system. Well, the 2600 as it was known a little bit later on. Let's get into some games, and we're gonna start with the very first cartridge, which came along and was boxed with this uh, Shane, you can see it here, game program, it says on here, combat, simple tank game, let's check it out. So guys, the bizarre thing about combat, of course, <laughs> one of the first uh, games, or the first game to ship with the VCS is that it's, you know, it's two players, there's no AI, and the first uh, version, or the first variation of the game, as you can see, it was pretty damn basic <laughs> so I could fire and steer my shots and uh, hit your mate and uh, of course you need your your mate to be uh, moving around as well and of course and there's no barriers on this variation it was all very basic but I still remember guys having fun even with this variation as uh, you know the other guys moving around and you're trying to get your, your uh, bullets to move and you can't move very fast either so it's all part of the, part of the fun but if you change the uh, the game selection you have got variations and then of course it's a little bit better when it has a little bit more stuff like this um, where you've got things to work around so this was more traditional to the game tank and the arcades um, which was really cool actually, I love playing that tank game in the arcades and I, and I definitely did play that game actually before playing this at home um, which is why I sort of really took to this game um, but yeah, you need to have someone else to play with you now this version, you know, tended to be quite slow as you cruise around um, and hard to hit each other um, but there's a variation later where we got number six I think it is and this one here it actually bounces off like a bit of pong <laughs> and this one was 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 heaps of fun because you could you know try and ricochet it there you go <laughs> get the guy behind the shields so yeah so it was a lot of fun obviously extremely basic um, gameplay. Alright, the next one we should move on to is Space Invaders. I was disappointed with this version um, and even though I was disappointed I still played the hell out of this game. Um, so let's just get into it and, ha and, and play here. Um, let me turn that light off too, we've got a bad reflection haven't we? There we go. So what I didn't like was the fact that Atari licensed the name, you know, got the Space Invaders name. They licensed the game name. They could have had accurate characters, and they just didn't. They could have had better sounds, I'm sure. I mean, I know the, v the VCS was limited, but these sounds... I mean, look, the marching sound is okay. It's still high pitch. It's not a low dum 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 that Space Invaders had. The s sounds of the missiles... The explosions are terrible, and of course, look, the Space Invaders themselves look nothing like the originals. And it's not like the VCS can't do it. Um, it certainly was able to do it. I mean, if anything, I'll give them credit for the invaders that they came up with. <laughs> because they're actually, so they're actually quite cool looking if I look at them now. But I was just so disappointed that they weren't... They didn't look like the original ones, you know. I, back then, the whole arcade experience was so mesmerising that being able to get that at home would have been so cool. And I remember looking through some magazines, and I think it was like that. Was it the Adam in in the UK? Like some of the UK magazines would show. I think it was the was it Coleco Adam. Is that right? One of them anyway had screenshots of Space Invaders, and I don't think it actually played that well, um, but it looked just like Space Invaders, and I remember looking at the screenshot just thinking I was so jealous um, of how that looked. 
um, but apparently the gameplay wasn't that good. And and look, I will give it to this this version. It's it's smooth. It's it's actually fun to play. Um, it just doesn't authentically look like Space Invaders, but it still has the same <laughs> same sort of frantic play to it. Anyway, that is Space Invaders. Uh, as I said, bit of a letdown in terms of the graphics and, and the sounds. I still loved it though. Definitely a classic in its own unique way, really. Um, and I definitely played and played and played the hell out of that. The next one, which I also played a lot, was Asteroids. Now, I don't know what's going on here, guys, with the funny um, colouring in the middle of the Asteroids. They should be solid. This <laughs> is quite strange how that's looking. But uh, anyway, um, Asteroids. Well... You know, in the arcade, this was a vector game, of course. Um, I remember playing this to death. I keep saying to death, don't I? But I really do. All of these games are absolutely hounded. So much so, I broke many a controller. Just busted the plastic in them from playing them so much. Uh, well, I'm going to die. Um, and it's funny playing this now because I didn't realize the, the sounds in the asteroid are pretty harsh. They're pretty square waves um, compared to some of the other games. It just, it just sounds really harsh. Like the firing is really harsh. Um, the sound in the background is pretty harsh. But, you know... The bizarre thing, of course, is in the arcades, the vector machine was hollow asteroids, not solid and not coloured. So it was quite bizarre to have the home version in a way, sort of, I mean, it wasn't better, obviously, because you can't beat a vector machine, but it was pretty cool that they, they put the colours in. Um, and they sort of had to, really, because they just didn't have the high resolution to be able to pull off anything close to what a vector would look like. Um, so yeah, and geez, I could just feel my I could feel my hand getting sore already. <laughs> Back in the day, these Atari joysticks they would get warm. The plastic would get warm in the hand <laughs> from playing so long. Geez, that's piercing, extra man. I think on the side here, see how the bullets don't quite come out the front? It's quite quite weird. Not, it's not quite lined up. It's just again a uh, limitation of the graphics. But again, look, even the bullets here are really small. So you certainly can get a small dot on the screen. Well, um, which sort of surprises me sometimes that they, they can't get more circles and stuff like that. In some games, you sort of, oh, well. Now, this particular, this first version, if I pull back on the stick, I will hyperspace out like that. But then I don't know where I'm going to end up. There I am over here. Uh, some of the other versions of the game, you've got shield, and the shield one is the best. So there's one where you can just like hold it back, and you've got a shield, and the shield you can keep on for ages. Um, and I remember I used to play that version a lot because it just keep going and going and going because really. If it, any, if they come close to you, you just put the shield on and you're, and you're sweet. And because it doesn't come off automatically, it's sort of too easy in a way. This is very much harder with uh, just the hyperspace. <laughs> so basic, isn't it, guys? Alright, well, we'll leave it there and we'll hook on to the next game. The next one we're going to look at is Basketball. Now this version of Basketball is very much like the Atari 800 version which I loved as well. Um, and the Atari 800 version just had, a, had an extra sort of court drawn in and, and a net and stuff. Otherwise it was sort of pretty much the same game. And this was a lot of fun. Again, um, no computer player on the VCS version I don't think. Um, there was, I believe, yeah, there was computer players on the Atari uh, 800 version. I think you could play four, four players on the 800 version too. Uh, anyway, I, um, I'm going to flick through the variations in a minute and see, actually. 
funny that you're, you're sort of playing with this very square looking ball and again that's why I don't I don't get you know, it's just like some of the other graphics is you know very small pixels but for some reason it's a big square ball so the cool thing with this game is you get enclosed just do a little flick you can flick it in that way um, I can come in here and you know, grab grab it off here if you get too close like this you end up like booting the ball between yourselves <laughs> sort of jams up <laughs> How funny is that? But it's really cool because you just sort of flick in and grab the ball off the other person. If you want to do a three-pointer, you hold down um, the button. You see it goes low and high. It goes high, you let it go. It does a big shot. There we go. It goes all the way through. Um, you can do own goals as well. So if I push that up through there, <laughs> it's going to give the other guy a second shot. Um, but that's the other thing you can do in here is push it through like that and come back down for a shot and go in. But yeah, guys, this is um, this is a game that when you do play uh, two players, it's not going to make it. Um, it actually, it's, it's actually a lot of fun. It really is. Um, I used to love playing this with with my friends. Um, it's one of these ones that with this with the Atari joystick in particular, you just get into a real knack of how it works. <laughs> So yeah guys, that's uh, Atari Basketball, uh, definite classic and lots of fun. <laughs> Alright, well let's move on from there and now let's take a look at Laser Blast. Okay guys, Laser Blast. Well Laser Blast is an interesting one because this was the game that I ended up getting a million points and sending a Polaroid picture into Activision to get one of their patches that they released back in the day that they did for several of their games. And I remember I did it on the game number one or difficulty number one, which was definitely the easiest. So they didn't have a way of actually sort of saying you must do it on the higher difficulties. I think it's got four, four difficulties. And they are much harder on the other ones. So the first one is just a endurance test. I think anyone can get the, the million <laughs> when you play the first uh, version of it. Um, and I'll just I'll just start it as we get playing. Um, and that was an absolute terrible start. But what what you do, <laughs> I shall show you, is effectively every single one of these you just pop off one at a time across like that. Stay up high, and occasionally you'll get one that comes across like that. Looks like I'm not going to get very far, but we'll uh, we'll see. The thing is that keeps you going in this game is every thousand points you get another man. And it doesn't take that long to um, to accrue that amount of points uh, and get that extra man like I just did then when I lost one. Um, but yeah, I think even though this particular game is a, a great example, um, normally you'll find it's pretty easy uh, on the first level and it's just a time thing. You just got to keep cranking through. <laughs> I mean, this game could have been so much better. They could have, oh geez, I hesitated there. Um, they could have put like, you know, I don't know, sort of things, things in the sky or just different ways that the, um, that the AI works. Um, but, you know, I guess they were, they were working with such primitive hardware and a lot of the other games were so simple back then, people didn't really expect a lot. I, I know when I played this, I was really happy with it. <laughs> I certainly didn't think, oh, I wish they, you know, did something different. <laughs> it's like, it's exactly the same thing <laughs> over and over and over again. It's hardly, you know, the complexities of something like Donkey Kong or something, is it? So, but, you know, a lot of Activision games um, were quite simple. Whoop. Um, but still enjoyable to play, I don't know. This is this can become quite sort of hypnotic. You keep playing this game. So yeah, you can see I picked up a few ships from being down. Uh, I think you can only get six max, and then it doesn't give you any more. 
I don't think it bangs them either. Um, but guys, seriously, it's not, not a problem. So anyway, the patch that I originally earned, um, I lost. I don't know where it is. And I ended up buying a replacement off eBay. Um, oh, well, I was slow on that one. Um, there's a few eBay sellers selling them. And um, I thought, well, I'll pick it up because I, I did, did actually earn one. Um, but I must admit, I sort of feel like I, sh I should do it again. <laughs> Just to, you know, to video it. <laughs> Get a record. Since there's been so much uh, strange things happening recently with people's uh, records. And them not being um, legit. <laughs> so I sort of feel like I should redo it. And I think I probably can. But I'm just going to probably get a sore hand doing it. <laughs> um, and I think it would take probably, I don't know, two and a half hours or so of continuous play. Do I really want to do that? Playing this? <clears throat> Maybe. <laughs> Alright, let's give this one up and move on. And we're going to look at um, two paddle games. And we're going to start with an absolute classic, which is Breakout. So look at this, guys. Breakout, so basic. Paddle controllers. And I guess this is one thing like Atari did really well, I think. Like the whole package, the whole way the unit looks, the joysticks were just so nice to use. Um, and the paddle controllers, the same deal. Really, really nice. Two controllers into the one port, so you could have up to four players. Um, and nice, super smooth um, way of moving the paddle. And of course, this came from the original Atari Pong, right? Which uses um, pedals and pots, basically, for uh, for movement. So yeah, nice and nice and smooth. But guys, this game is <laughs> very basic. Um, and the weird thing about it is that the ball doesn't sort of deflect off the paddle how you expect it would. It's sort of almost random, um, which is a bit of a shame in a way because it sort of takes away some of the, like that, <laughs> takes away some of the sort of skill. And it's, the game seems to like doing these real side-on ones to make it harder. And initially everything goes pretty slow. Um, and then it really picks up in pace and look it, it actually can be quite challenging and because the um, the controller is so nice and smooth it's actually quite nice to play so you can oops <laughs> you can sit and um, almost mellow out to this I mean if you think about the complexities of today's modern games and then look at this it's like this is like meditation <laughs> some people might like not might not like it for meditation but I don't know for me it's like 8 bit meditation <laughs> the next pedal game which is one of my absolute favorites as it transitioned through into the arcade or for, oh, actually the arcade first and transition back to here and that is Warlords. Okay, we are now looking at Warlords, guys, and what an awesome game this is. I'm going to start it, but uh, I will be playing by myself. <laughs> so um, no computer guys, computer AI to play against. Um, I'm up the top left there in the yellow, of course. The only one moving. And you need to protect your base, very much sort of Pong style. Um, but this guys with four players is just so much fun and the thing is is that you can ricochet it off your shield and you can also catch it like that so if I hold down my button on the paddle um, I can uh, grab it and redirect it elsewhere and I tell you what that is so much fun when you're playing with other people you can sort of um, grab onto it and then 
flick it around the other side of your uh, castle and shoot it off real quick. One guy's down. So yeah, it's not uh, it's not the best game um, when it's just by myself. <laughs> Here I can fire this into this guy. <laughs> Get him gone. Do the same over here. Uh, we'll come off, bounce off a bit. Um, but yeah, when the ball goes really quick like that, it's just crazy. And of course, you know, this was awesome in the arcades. Had the dragon that would fire the, the fireballs um, instead of the, uh, the white ball that I've got here. And, uh, and you could get multiple uh, balls as well on the arcade version. So yeah, it's again not much more to show on this um, playing single player, but this game here guys is one that you must, must get and get four players going. Alright guys, well, we shall move on to Air Sea Battle. And this is really a shooting arcade style game guys. Um, I'm on the left now, I would normally be playing against the guy on my right and it would be the first person to get to... 20 and I like this game originally it was Atari's number two game I think straight after combat so it you know sort of reflects its simplicity um, but I, I liked it now with the joystick really all you do is if I hold it back it goes straight up like that if I let it go it goes 45 sort of thing well, that's probably that's more less than 45, isn't it? And if I hold it forward, it's about 45. And that's really all you've got in terms of aiming. Um, and it's the first person to to 20, basically. And uh, I'm having a, I'm having a hard time uh, getting this guy. <laughs> wow. Okay, here we go. Um, and it's a little bit of a shame in a way that they didn't implement like left and right movement. So left and right movement would have been cool, even like to halfway of the screen. Just would have given it that extra bit of dynamic. Um, you know, of course they could have had the, the guy shooting down at you or whatever, but we are talking very early. Well, I'm not doing very well here, guys. Um, we're talking really early gaming here and if anything this has probably been designed in the shooting gallery format right very much from a fairground shooting gallery where you just shoot the targets and they don't shoot back at you so yeah simplistic um, I lo again love this graphics I just thought the colors on this was just unbelievable just so anyway guys, um, that is AC Battle. Uh, I definitely played it a lot, uh, even though today it seems very, very simplistic of course, but definitely a classic for me back in the day. All right, let's um, finish with our final game, which is Pac-Man. Now guys, Pac-Man was a huge disappointment. Let me start it here, and you will see just how bad <laughs> it is. It was a shocker. The ghosts were all flickering, which I guess ghosts probably should do, but it just looks bad. The sound of the eating of the dots is horrible. Um, the maze isn't the right maze. Uh, when they are blue, I can't really tell if they're blue or not right now, or when they're changing back. <laughs> it's just horrible uh, the pac-man you know looks terrible he's got the eye on him which he shouldn't have and he only goes uh graphically he only goes left and right uh, he doesn't move up or down um in terms of his graphical shape doesn't change oh shoot i was trying, I was trying to get that horrible little wafer thing that's supposed to be the cherry in the middle it's just horrible guys it really is shocking and I know the, the VCS was limited, but the thing is, is since this game, guys, there have been some homebrew programmers who have programmed new versions on the Atari <coughs> uh, VCS. Let's take a look.
and look at this to start with you've even got a full intro just like the arcade version and you can see as he picks up the ghost you've got all the the scores on it and look at this <laughs> look at this guys we've got the right maze right i know the graphics are a bit limited in terms of dots still not sure why they can't get actually small dots in this this space but i guess it's a little bit like um uh the player missile graphics and on the atari 800 where you've only got a certain number that you can use and everything else you're sort of limited um in terms of sizing i guess i don't know i'm, I'm not an expert at all on how the vcs works programming wise but look at what this guy's done um it just looks almost as good as the Atari 800 version and in some ways better because the, it has this title screen and a demo and I don't think the Atari 800 version has that. But look what happens when we start it guys. Listen to that. <laughs> the sounds are all close to the arcade version. How cool is that? Got the siren. The eating of the dots is so much better. All those sounds are perfect. Get the cherry. It's just, it's just amazing. It's amazing that they could program this to this level of quality on the VCS, which is just so limited in so many ways. And you can imagine if this came out back in the day, if this version came out, it would have been like, it would have been the best seller for Atari. So it just goes to show, eh, like, the skills of programmers that after having the hardware for so many years, they've worked out all sorts of ways to uh, trick the system and get seemingly more power and abilities out of it. <laughs> Let's take a look at even down the bottom you've got the number of packs down there you've got the fruit showing it comes up with the ready it's got everything it's absolutely incredible flashing screen <laughs> it's, just, it's so good in fact if it was if the dots were just actual dots you know it's almost indistinguishable well not quite you know the ghosts don't quite have their white eyes and all the rest of it from the arcade version but come on man this is really really good anyway guys that's it that's the top eight um let's finish this video up so there you have it guys what did you think of that i'm still surprised eh, that that was like the eight games that i had and played again and again and again <laughs> eight <laughs> look how many games i've got now think how many games you've got and, uh, and I swear that those games kept me occupied for a, like an entire year um, before I got that Atari 800. And until next time guys, please look after yourself and all that good stuff. And even though like the old Atari VCS never took any coins, I sort of feel like I need to have another coin to, uh, to play one more game. So, got a 20. <laughs> Fight like a robot.